I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man, this sucks. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Working Class Souls podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in a break room. My co-host, Josh Ricardo. Eddie. What's up, buddy? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, bro. Today, we have a guest that not only is comedy adjacent, but he is radio royalty at this point, or maybe he might be the last survivor. Uh, Ralph Sutton is the co-host of the SDR show and also Good Sugar podcast. He is also the pro- co-proprietor of the massive podcast distribution company, Gas Digital. Uh, also, SDR ranks pretty much in the top 10 of all podcasts usually and has over 200,000 listeners and he also started as an actual radio DJ and hosted the tour bus radio for almost two decades the one and only Ralph Sutton hello that is all very true yep <laughs> I would nailed you, it would you happen to have 400 nonsensical tchotchkes shoved into a room <laughs> I mean I love how like you <laughs> that is it's like my it safe space in here it's okay. like a little clubhouse and ralph is just taking huge shits on it oh and i love it like too. five minutes i love it yeah yeah yeah. because uh, to me he... it's it's so foreign like <laughs> oh just having stuff and having general? like just stuff oh, around yeah. so my yeah. wife hates it oh so, it's so opposite she, because my wife would love all this stuff. yeah uh, she uh, wants it all she wants like less of everything yeah in terms of like nonsense tchotchkes i'm in my head i have three things in my house that are like this style of thing because your thing isn't Tchotchkes, your thing no. is like tech nerd out. I mean, when True. I first met Ralph, he knew how to do the Amazon Fire. He didn't offer it to me, but he knew how to do an Amazon <laughs> Fire. He just like name drop. Like, I did it for this guy and this guy <laughs> or Bobby <laughs> Kelly. I did it for <laughs> Jeff Big J. Like, oh, oh, cool. Okay, yeah, thanks. You I mean, could ask. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, it, but he knew like all that shit. He was the yeah. first dude I ever met that had his whole house, like his apartment in East Village when I first went there, just set up to like a one-stop shop. Yeah, it's all connected to like Alexa. Did you do the Same Sonos? Here. I have a Sonos. Sonos. Guy, yes. I also build my own computers. I, oh, shit, I dude. love all that shit. I was wanted by the FBI for computer hacking when I was 14. Oh, they oh, came to my house. It was really crazy. You're, oh, now you're killing badass. me because I, I, I can't get to that now. Let's just start with this. <laughs> what is the worst day job you've ever had? So, by the way, it perfectly uh, syncs to me being a tech nerd. Okay. Um, after leaving the restaurant business, I started- well, as a waiter? No, I ran a restaurant for four years. I went to cooking school for a year. Yeah. Ran a restaurant for four years here in the city. Um, oh, yeah, you're a, a French big bistro. foodie. Crazy into okay. food. I still cook a lot. Yeah. Jay makes fun of me all the time for posting my pics. But, uh, <laughs> so I needed to still make money, but I just knew I didn't want to be really in restaurants anymore. So I started doing tech for restaurants. So like yeah. helping them. This is Now it's commonplace that there is no cashier at a restaurant. It's all with a little mobile device or it's through a computer system, some sort of POS system. But back then it was like, I was one of the pioneers of bringing that into restaurants. Really? Yeah, one of the early, before it was even, they were talking about like, I guess 1992 yes. or three. Like the NCR that. systems? Yeah, exactly, like those systems. Yeah, Eddie's an old fucking <laughs> waiter head from like way 10 back. 10 years in a restaurant. So, yeah. oh good, yeah. so. Thank him, you fuck. Yeah. You I, made your job easier. Immediately, by the way, say you save How a restaurant. How many voids, you know what I mean? Yeah. How long I had to wait for voids? But we also, by the way, like, it would be stupid things like set it up so that the, uh, the the check the 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 ticks that come out of the the kitchen would go come out in Spanish for the Spanish guy Russian for wow. the Whoa. so it was like set up to make it easier for everybody. was it a high end restaurant or just a oh, middle it was a French of the road bistro, oh, cool. you know oh, cool. twenty something dollar entrees at the time and uh, whatever but um so then I started being tech for uh, several different establishments one being the duplex which is still around to yeah. this day and the restaurant that I had just left and a few others and I fucking hated it because. People are stupid. You know, people are not tech savvy. Yeah. People are dumb. And I would get calls all the time and come in and it was something stupid. So you rep the tech, the, the like the portion of tech in the restaurant, but you're not there every day. No. Okay. At this point. I, when I was running the restaurant, yeah. Yeah. At this point, yes. I was just there to help install the computer systems and then help them when, oh, this program's not working right. Or, oh, I can't see out the register or whatever. And I was just like, you know, there's, there's clips all around the world listen to like dumb tech clips how how stupid people are like there's one where the girl this is uh, dating myself where the girl calls and complains that um her cup holder stopped working and she was using a cd tray as a cup holder (laughs) she didn't know i mean that's how stupid people are right but so this one they called this restaurant was open till four in the morning and they called we woke me up at 3 30 in the morning saying that they cannot z out the register to close out the checks because the printer is down okay 
I was like, look, look, dude, it's. Are you sure you've tried everything? Yeah. It, and I wasn't making a lot of money. This was a a transitional job to get me out of. And you were the only. You were solo. Solo. Oh yeah, yeah that's tough. So I get in. At the time, I had a car in the city because I was also still strip club DJing. So I would. Well, yeah. So <laughs> we're gonna get to that too. Is this? Were you building into trying to get into radio? So I was. Yes. Okay. By the way, and I'll get. That's a whole other thing. Okay. Right? But it will, that's a whole other side story. Driving two hours to work midnight to six in the morning for $6 an hour in radio and then driving two hours back to start my morning shift at 8 a.m. at the restaurant. So you're like a zombie then. It was horrible. But that's why I had to transition out of the restaurant and got into tech. So I get out of my cup. I'm going in my pajamas. I'm half asleep. I drive. What's the end game? Why do they need you there? Because they can't can't close close out out the checks to get Uh, get processed and go on. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, dude, I don't even, I see it from the door. I just walk in. I never break contact with the waiter, and I just plug the printer in, uh, turn around and go home, uh, and canceled. That was it. I quit the next day. So uh, I'm done. Go find someone else to do this. I'm not doing the shit anymore. Uh, it was crazy. Uh, <laughs> it was crazy. And that was like the 50th what? version of that. You know, uh, the 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 one time I say I'm trying to run this program and it's not working. It's back when you had to <laughs> have CDs. And I say, first things first is the CD in the CD tray. And I hear. <sighs> All right, thanks. I was like, <laughs> that kind of shit all the time. And I just started to lose my fucking mind. Yeah. And that was my breaking point. But in a way, that was the catalyst to say, okay, I need to do full-time radio now. I need to start figuring things out. Well, you're yeah. like kind of like that. I mean, I've known you for a while. And it, I think like that makes sense now why people who are inept really irk you. Oh, you get irked by get any kind of like detail being missing that seems obvious. Yeah. Like you I don't have know, much patience. I definitely have OCD. That I'm a yeah, well aware. Yeah, you definitely do. Of, right, but it's it's not debilitating OCD. It's like the, the best thing that just happened to me. Uh, two you days don't have ago. to go back to the apartment if you don't no, do a routine. No, okay. I don't. If like the if my uh, pans are out of order and the size order, they're always in size order. But if like the cleaning lady came and put them back in different, I don't. I can leave. Okay. You know, I won't think about it. But when I come back, I will put you it fix back. it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it took me a long time to get there, though. I'm OCD too, and it okay. took me a long. Are you like that? You can't leave. You'll have to. Like, I mean, have you seen my house? I mean, it's it is. It is if spotless. something. I yeah, used to do a thing where I would have to run back if I thought one thing. Wow. Because it would bother me. Oh, I'm not oh, that wow. bad. It used to be that bad. My dad was uh, on, off, on a light. Oh. See, I was off, never on, that. Off. I was he never was like the bad. five thing or yeah, anything. He was it was that just. Bad. But um, I also have this fucking weird thing where I'll hold the menu. And I'll like, oh, there's a spelling error on this menu. I just know. Like, it doesn't always happen. But when I get that feeling, I'm like, all right, now I got to look at this fucking oh, menu. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. And it is, there's always, an, it's never once, my spidey sense of spelling errors has never failed me. If I feel it, I know there's a spelling error. Dude, that's like some blackjack it's shit, dude. Weird. Let's it's go weird. to the fucking table. Yeah. <laughs> you're count cards, you're literally. <laughs> only, only if they spell blackjack yeah. well. <laughs> It's most useless. <laughs> it's Can't make a, them any money. So, as, just you know, annoy friends, family, <laughs> exactly. girlfriends. <laughs> I, you know, you, you mentioned Good Sugar. Uh, the, the predecessor to Good Sugar was this company called Juice Press that I helped build that company. And there's 90 locations now, but the owner sold out. And the job when I was there, I helped them go from like two or three locations to about 30 and I quit. But um, nothing could go to print unless it was sent to me first. That was part of the deal. Because wow. you'd print menus or you'd print flyers. And I was like, they all say, I triple checked it. I said, I right, just send it. To, and yeah. I would say 70 to 80% of the time. I would find an additional. How the hell are you getting error? out of the office at Gas Digital if you're like that? But yeah, it's not easy, right? It's but I'll tell you easy. what, though, that is a that's borderline like also professional. You know what I mean? It's like True. there needs to be some because exactly, dude. People are fucking dumb. Right. People are lazy, and it's like I just inherently don't trust anyone to do their job. Like when I don't triple check something, mm-hmm. it's because I'm like, fuck it. Yeah. I don't care. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's there's probably a mistake in there, but like I'm I'm saying fuck it. I, I always try to tell like the, the office manager, I don't know if you've met the new office manager. No, I haven't met in a minute. But um I say, look, just pretend it's a fucking showroom. No matter what. But no matter I can't train you to look at this like I would look at it. So sure. I always notice like, oh, the fucking tissue paper, the, the tissues are missing. Yeah. They're empty. Or oh, you know, there's not the napkins aren't set up right in the bathroom. Dumb things like that, or lights out in the hallway. Yeah, like I lose my shit. Yeah, I'm a detail-oriented guy now. I'm not an OCD guy. I'm just detail-oriented, and I'm not using that as just like a scapegoat to say hmm. like I'm an anal asshole. But I don't see how you get into a field where you're around comedians, which I would say is probably the most irresponsible oh, group God, yeah. of professionals <laughs> yeah, right. you've ever met. Yeah, uh, I've had to readjust. Yeah, right. So, for instance, when Jane and I first did SDR right at gas digital 
So Gas Digital has a unique uh, setup in that it's live, you know, so it's appointment television, but it's also on demand after the fact, right? So that's the one two that that we do. Like Netflix doesn't do that. They're yeah, always on a you know on a, on demand. Mm-hmm. And SDR starts at nine, and I would just fucking start the show if Jay is not in yet. I don't care. The show starts at nine because I'm a psychopath, and we did that for about a year until I finally realized, oh, it's okay if it starts at nine oh five. Like no one is gonna fucking die that we started five minutes late. But for that first year when we were, I was like, no, no, nine o'clock we start, and I just well, was thank always God, that it's way. It's a balance, right? Like they need, he needs you, you need him. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's right. a balance, right? It is sure. But now right. I realize also I was the only show that was always fucking starting on time. You know, none of the other shows start on time. <laughs> So I was like, what am but I if doing? If you're doing TV, though, if you're showing it and people, your viewers are depending upon. Right, I agree with you. Yeah. You know, but, but I get what you're yeah. saying. But 905 is not the end of the, end yeah. of the world. Right, 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 right. But there is a certain level of like, we're bringing a higher level of like, just work ethic, all Agreed. that stuff. Like, Agreed. I'm totally on board with that. Although, like, I see it and I'm like, okay, I already like kind of gauge a little bit back. I think it's because my wife is just chaos yeah. you know what i mean when it comes yeah, to like yeah, the yeah. Uh, show opposite of me of like geez, she'll be 25 minutes late and not even oh, I can't. Hex I, somebody I, like, you know what i mean i'm like what is happening right now i will end dates like i so i'm on a first date with a girl this is like six months ago and we're supposed to meet at seven o'clock at 7 15 she's not there nor had she texted me uh, yeah. that she's running late so i leave <laughs> right and as i'm walking out the door She's coming in and she goes, what, what are you doing? I said, well, it's 15 minutes late. I haven't heard from you. I'm leaving. She goes, what do you mean you're leaving? I said, yeah, I mean, it's disrespectful. And she goes, are you not used to the fact that pretty girls run late? Eesh. And I said, I, think, I really want to leave. I said, I think you're just used to the fact that guys don't call you out on your shit. This is disrespectful. Yeah. I'm leaving. She started crying. Wow. Right? So then we sat and had dinner. But I'm never, yeah. I'm never going to see her again, though. It was a one, it was a one off. But we sat in that dinner yeah, yeah. while she was crying. She was crying. Like eat your like beef, good bitch. Like Goodfellas, where uh, Henry doesn't show up for the day. I don't know. I really like you. <laughs> I'm worried. At this point, I'm worried. <laughs> well, okay, so now. Is it okay? My feet are up there, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, all good. I mean, you were fucking bigfoot motherfucker. 15, now you're blocking buddy. my face. You're Sorry. huge. No, you're good. Don't put it up there. I'm just messing around. So when you are doing the tech gig you quit how are you figuring out you have to get another job before you start so radio? what i realized is that you know the i haven't done it now in fucking probably 12 years but having the strip club dj thing to fall back on yeah as much as i fucking hated it at the time which i don't know what it is like now it's been over a decade you know i was probably more than that mm-hmm. it was 34 when i quit uh totally um, I went back once, maybe when I was 37, to do one night as a, as a favor to somebody. But a bad night back then, a bad night was a thousand dollars. Wow! Right? So and that, this is, wow. and I was in my when I first started my in my 20s. I did it for like 15 years. Yeah. But I was in my 20s. I was making like two grand a night. Thank God I didn't have drug issues or wow. Because I just saved money. You wow. Know? Just pocketed just cash. Pocketed cash. Oh, there's this rumor on Gas Digital that like people think my mom's super wealthy. My dad was, but he didn't really. It's not worth getting into it. We didn't. Yeah, really, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you've told me off yeah, about that. Yep. It doesn't matter. But you know, it came from. I got a would pocket strip club money, and then B got very lucky with some investments. Like I, not to brag about this, but I, when Facebook first IPO'd, it dropped to seventeen dollars. Yeah, I remember that. And oh, I know? put every fucking dollar because wow. I'm like I use Facebook every day, and I sold it at three hundred or something. Yeah. And so I made a fortune. And it, wow. But anyway, so back then I knew. I could go back one day a week, one more day a week at strip club, and even a, a bad night would be like seven hundred dollars. Like I'd be like, uh, I, the minimum usually was like at least if you made a mil, uh, I mean a, a thousand. Yeah, that was like average. That was like a good night. Okay, know? so for the audience, I uh, let's let's talk about how a DJ would make that. So I, uh, it might be different now. By I'm way. sure. Yeah. I'm sure, but I always wanted to be like when I was like eighteen. I was definitely weird and sexually weird, and I would like love. He says were. I well, I mean, I'm weird. still weird, but I'm so into it. I can actually meet other weird people now. But then you didn't really know where to go, and I started going to like an 18 over strip club called Cheetahs in San Diego. Started seeing a girl that worked there. Loved the environment. Felt so at home amongst the other dirt bags. <laughs> and I remember she introduced me to this guy who looked like a. He had a skullet. 
and his Wait, eyes were what? sunken in, That's and his skull looked Is like that corn bald? on the cob. It's bald on the top, and <laughs> like a mullet, Full but mullet. with no hair on top. <laughs> <laughs> you never heard Scullet, yeah. yeah. Fucking Scullet, yeah. just grit, like he's smoking grits, like the at five o'clock shadow constantly. And he was a DJ, and his girl was a smoke show that worked there. And he it told me, I became friendly with him, and he had told me how much he made a night. I just started ripping everything off Napster, making as many CDs as possible, and trying to see if I could be a DJ. And that's mm. before I got into stand up. And when I met Ralph, and he was like, yeah, that's what I used to do. Now, why does why do DJs then make so much money? Can you please break yeah, down the pay sure. system? Well, the pay system, at least back when I was doing it, was very simple. Was that the, you had no salary as a DJ, no no actual money. You weren't making like a, a fixed rate. But every girl that worked there had to tip you a minimum amount. And at the club I was at, it was twenty dollars a girl. Okay, mm-hmm. they had to give you twenty, and that was called minimum. And minimum meant minimum, meaning like. Oh, you want certain music? Oh, you want to go on stage at a certain time? Oh, you don't want to go on stage at a certain Well, that's not minimum. Yeah, that's so, extra. That's extra. Oh, so, so you control the schedule of the control, girls? At least, again, when I did, you don't control the schedule. You control who goes on stage when, what stages they go on, oh, what wow. music they listen to, sure. who they go up with. Because uh-huh. some girls fucking hated each other. Yeah, yeah. right, you know? right, right. And some girls, like, two girls had the same customer, and he's walking in, which girl you call on stage the other uh-huh. girl's gonna get that custom. So yeah. you can be out of grand just by the fact that he calls you up because you didn't tip right. out right. Exactly. What an so, angle. So yeah, I was you know I was very good at not only You know what's great too? I'm hearing Ralph's like DJ voice right now too. Yeah, do it's it, like, do oh, it. Can you do uh, it? Uh, you know it's funny. If we had, there's a clip of me online because I did Corolla show. <laughs> yeah. Right. And he asked me to do it, so I did it. Uh, but it's like it's like it's like right, I guess it's like right, if yeah, you're yeah, an impressionist, yeah. they always say, Oh, dude, do fucking yeah, 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 yeah. Crystal sorry, Walker, sorry. you know. <laughs> Just ask you to do yeah. your do your own dirtbag yeah, self. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Play your asshole yeah, self for a yeah, minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I would make the clubs more money than any other DJ. Like I was thirty oh, percent more on average if I was working. So then I was for a while being like, what brought, a leverage move too. If they're like, oh, yeah. if you want the shift you want, I had every, give it to I had whatever the fuck I wanted for a while. It was crazy because the shift you're talking about is like the weekends, right? The best night is Thursday. Always Thursday. Yeah. Saturdays suck because it's like bachelor parties and yeah. Like uh, but right. Wednesday, Thursday were always the best. The weekends you get the kids. Okay. The Wednesday, Thursday you'd get people with money that were like you know didn't want to go, go in and get lap yeah, dances. Go and get yeah, lap yeah. Dances and have regulars. They all were like thinking they were in relationships. Like of course the amount of times that a fucking it's the original OnlyFans of titty bar. Yes, and the amount of times like a guy would come up and was like ah. I had to come in tonight because it's Amber's birthday. She'd kill me if I didn't come in. I like, used to love. Now wow. I miss that. I miss the guys that were like the massage therapist. Probably wasn't, but yeah. he would tell the girls and he would pay them to let him massage. massage. Like just yeah. there was an element of dude everywhere. Like he, oh, this guy thinks he's in a yeah. relationship. This guy thinks he's a One massage therapist. One guy would therapist. take these. He would take two dollar bills and tape them together so they looked like a seamless, and then roll them up into like groups of a hundred or two hundred dollars and he would throw them on stage that was his move right he wanted to be known as the two dollar bill guy so fucking weird that's why you know men are we're, we're all idiots you know so yeah. really we really are so i would average about 30 35 dollars a girl and there'd be 50 60 girls sometimes you know mm-hmm. 70 girls sometimes and that you'd make crazy money and then also you'd have douchebag customers that wanted to hear a song and they would always say i'd say it's it's 20 bucks to hear a song. And they'd say, I might give you 20 bucks. And my answer would always be like, I guess he didn't really want to hear that song. Yeah. You know? But you don't love yeah. Eagles that much. Right. <laughs> but then there'd be power moves too. Like, hey, take my girl off. Here's 100 bucks. You know, that kind of oh. shit. Yeah. Things like that all the time. So you would, I mean, one of the, the stories is that at Scores, a guy came in and said, I want to hear No Rain by Blind Melons when it was a big song. Mm-hmm. I'll give you like, I think, I'm gonna, it's been a long time. It's like $200. Damn. Play it next. Okay playing it's about a minute into the song he comes back in and he goes i will give you five hundred dollars to play it again when it ends so i'm like well if i do that i'm gonna get in fucking trouble sure. i'm gonna call the man i call the manager and i said look here's the steer the steer the deal he goes give me half the manager says nice. all right fine see that's how you gotta Love do it, it. third Love time it. i'll give you another thousand to play it again and i called him he said, give me half so i made like nine hundred dollars to play a song three times. How many people were coming to the booth like freaking out? What the fuck? Yeah, freaking out. But whatever. I was what did making you say some, on the some mic? dumb joke. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like, you know, they challenged me to see if I get everyone to sing along to the song. I don't oh, fucking so you know. made something up something to try up. to say yeah, yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. of fantastic. Face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was crazy. So what? okay, I gotta ask you this now. Like we ask comedians when they come into the chair, what 
what were you leaning towards? Like, what were you trying to do? This is a really unique scenario for our show where someone's doing a job that I think a lot of people would hear this and go, especially men, like, so you're around all these naked girls, you're making tons of money, and also... And by the way, getting laid. Where's your camera? A lot. It's, well, you got one there, you got one there. <laughs> we're everywhere. Uh, and I was a kid. I was like 25, oh, you know? Dude. And, and you're making bank. And also, if you did like to dabble in a little bit of drugs. So I didn't do any drugs. drugs. Never did any drugs. Yeah, but so See, that's yeah. what saved you, really. That's why yeah, you were so no successful. Drugs. Because like that's really like the downfall of like the strip club culture. Yeah, is... They're all they're all drugs. Yeah. They're all drinking. I never did the after party. They used to joke on the mic. They would always ask me come to the after party. And on the mic, I would say, I'm spending eight hours with you people. Yeah. I am not coming yeah. to your fucking after parties. Like I would shit on them, you know. <laughs> but in the, first of all. Nobody's You're so good at making friends, Ralph. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's at a strip club as a first life choice, no, right? Right. So not just the girls. Well, even you, right? Not even me. I so know. that's the question: How doing that and then trying to be a professional radio disc jockey? Well, how it happened? So I was a nightclub promoter first, right? I ran big nightclubs here in the city, and rock nights was the thing for me. Uh, Limelight and, and Palladium did that for years, and then in ninety one, ninety two. When rock changed because of Nirvana and Pearl Jam and all the big party clubs closed, I found myself out of a job because all these clubs were closing down. And I knew all the strippers because they would come Sunday nights to Rock and Roll Church at Limelight because maybe Axl Rose is going to be in the oh. VIP room and I can blow them. That was really what was happening. So when I finally left these rock clubs, the manager of scores said, you know all the girls anyway, just come work here. And so that I did it out of necessity because I needed a job. I thought I would be like a big um, rock and roll club promoter. That was my dream at the time. I wanted to book nightclubs and rock clubs and book bands. We had success to that for a few years, but it abruptly stopped. So I fell into strip clubs, mm -hmm. right? And about four or five, five but, years. Uh, oh, so you know rock better than anyone I know. I and mean, that era, I mean, I'm talking about yeah, era of yeah, rock. that era of rock. Because it's like age appropriate. It's what you were and you were in the scene. I was in that scene, yeah. Why? Is, was the blowjob in rock for a groupie that I just feel like that was like I got to blow that guy more it so was, than yeah. sex it more was like, so than sex yeah. what is that about that's a good question I don't know there was yeah. a because what they, an era where I've, chicks I've are heard, offering to blow you yeah I've yeah. heard girls say that too like I had a job and uh, Matt Dillon was at this bar and uh this girl came back. She goes, oh, my God, I'm going to go blow Matt Dillon. I was like, what? That's funny. I was like, what? Cool. <laughs> Matt Dillon used to live in my neighborhood, right? And we would see each other enough times. To do the what's up? We would do these. Yeah, yeah. one of these. Yeah. And then he moved out of the neighborhood. And like two years later, I saw him somewhere. And I went like this. And he looked like I was fucking nuts. He totally <laughs> forgot who I was. <laughs> yeah. There's also, there was a bar called Scrap Bar in the, in the, uh, West Village. It was a big rock bar, yeah. and it was so synonymous with Slash got blowjobs in Scrap Bar. Like that was known back then. Really, in like 1990. Oh, you might run by Scott. Maybe he's getting a blowjob in the fucking. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. I mean, it's just to have that be like I need a. You know, I want to. I want to get a, a guitar pick. <laughs> it's like that version. It could, I by wanna... the way, be as a byproduct of AIDS because we were oh. thought that you oh. couldn't get AIDS back then that's, so if you did blowjobs. So I think that could be what it was. That's yeah. interesting. That is interesting. Because I, I did that. know girls that like only gave, you know, they were like yeah. just famous for blowjobs, but like nobody really ever if You want to scribble with. those numbers yeah, down. Yeah, I mean, what are you, you been holding out for? Yeah. <laughs> You're doing the show for two months, you prick. <laughs> I don't know what they look like now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> blowjobs and blowjobs. <laughs> so what happened was strip clubs, which when it was making great money, it was easier to deal with, you know? Then a shit ton of strip clubs opened, where it used to be like five clubs in New oh, York. So oversaturation. Oversaturation. And then also, like I said, like not just the, the dancers, but anybody, the DJs, the customers. Nobody wants to go to a strip club. Yeah. I remember once a girl said to me, I'm never getting married because every guy here that's married is miserable. And I said, I feel like your sample size yeah. is skewed because yeah. you're only interviewing guys that are here. Yes. The happy married guys are probably not coming here every yeah. week. You know, yeah, that's yeah, just yeah. A, realistically. So it was, you're around a lot of fucking misery. Everyone's broken. And that's, yeah. I yeah. think that's why as a, a comedian, I always will be like, oh, I understand why people go there. 
Right. You know what I mean? Like most people don't get it. Like I was on the road with someone this weekend and wouldn't, you know, that's not their thing. And we were just chatting about it. But this comedian, it's like a really happy square kind of comedian. And I'm like, well, obviously you wouldn't want right. it. Like to your point, because yeah. why would you if that's not your deal? Yeah. Being around other broken people. Right. And I also would never, for the first, I, let's say I, did, I think I did it for about 16 years. I don't know exactly how many. It was a long time. But the last couple of years I started drinking because I was miserable. Yeah. And I would like just be sleeping all day and just getting up to go work till fucking five in the morning. And I just hated it. And yeah. I knew I had to get out. But there is this golden handcuff experience of making a grand an hour, even on a bad night, seven, eight hundred, whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what am I going to go work a full time, 40 hour right. a week job right. to make the same seven hundred dollars? Why the but fuck? But now you're a slave. Right. You're a exactly. slave to the money. Yeah. And those girls end up doing that because they piss it away. They all piss it you away. You know? And I think, okay, so you're doing radio for $6 an hour, and your dream and your aspiration is to be like who? Stern. Okay. That's yeah. what I figured, but I didn't want to put words in your mouth. Yeah, but, so okay. I met a guy at the strip club. I used to work the mid, the, the seven to close shift or eight, clo eight to close shift. And the guy that starts during the day was a new guy. I walked in. I used to go in like an hour before my shift started to see who girls are working because you have to make a list for rotation and blah, blah, blah. And I hear a voice. I'm like, well, this guy's got a great voice. But I could tell he knew nothing about strip. You just learn the tricks of any trade. Like I'm sure you could see a comic on stage immediately and go, oh, this guy's very green. You know? Yes. So I could tell he was very green. And so I went up to him and said, hey, I'm the night guy. And we start talking. And he's a radio guy that just moved to New York, New Jersey from Atlanta. And he has a job in radio. And I said, I'll make you a deal. You teach me. I'll teach you everything about this business so that you can make good money. You help me get one audition at the radio station. I don't care if I, you don't have to get me hired. Get me just one get me door. audition. Yeah. Get me in the door. So that happens. I go drive out two hours to meet this guy in the, the, the program manager. At, it's in Sussex, New Jersey, something like that. WNJ, it still exists. He says, all right, come back tonight. Work with the, mid, the guy that works 8 to midnight. Come at 10 o'clock. Stay with him till midnight. And if it goes well, maybe we'll hire you. Right? Okay. I drive two hours back home. Sit around for a few hours. Drive two hours back. Mm -hmm. I get there. The fucking guy is on the phone off air. Not on air. Yelling at his girlfriend, like freaking out, you fucking bitch, you comp. And hang up and then be like, all right, that was like totally like, like, and I'm like, what the fuck am I watching right now? Right. And then it gets closer and closer to midnight. And I learned nothing. Like he's like, yeah, this does this, this does this. We'll deal with it tomorrow. I just not in the right headspace. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to watch. It gets to midnight. The night, the overnight guy doesn't show up. He's just not there. And this guy wants to go fucking yell at his girlfriend. They were fine. And he goes, you know what, dude? Good luck. <laughs> right? And he left me there. Right? And then six in the morning comes and the program director comes and goes, what the fuck are you doing here? Yeah, I'm some like, guy you've never seen. Yeah. I mean, do you know that guy? Is that the guy who hooked you up with he, the audition? The, the okay. program director is the guy who told me to come back. Okay. He was, and he goes, what, like, what happened? I told him. He's like, oh, I guess you're fucking hired. Wow. And that's how I got started in oh, radio. Shit, dude. All right, working midnight to six. It was a two-hour drive. And it was, time was crazy. I would drive two hours back to the restaurant and start at eight in the morning. It's fucking crazy. It so the working class angle of this, how much is the fucking setup for all this shit? Like, are you having to lug around crates oh, of music? So much. When Even I was for doing the DJ gig, right? The, the radio, when I started my own show, um, I, would ca I had to get a specific car with my brother. I got him to... Because we were twins, I think you know we, were twins, but we yeah. lived together. I got him to agree to get like a a car with a bigger back, so I could put the hundreds of CDs in and everything. That I would have to carry everywhere all the fucking uh, time because mm -hmm. the local radio station would play whatever they had. Classic rock stations they play fucking fifty songs, yeah. really, yeah, yeah. It, you know. Yeah. And so I would have to carry everything all the time and set it. It would take an hour to set everything up so we could be ready to go. Yeah. It was horrible. Uh, that's also think why I have chronic back problems. <laughs> I mean, because those crates, I mean, they're not vinyl, so it's not like in the 80s where you're carrying a bunch of vinyl, but still, CDs, CDs still are great. heavy. It's still, yeah, still yeah, 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 absolutely. And then also just funny is that I, you know, we were a nobody fucking radio show when we started, two hours upstate, whatever, in Jersey, and we couldn't get real interviews. Right. I found in some CD store a bin of interview CDs of like famous rock stars, Guns N' Roses and Bon Jovi and Van Halen, and I listened to them all and then clipped out when it was a clean 
minute or two answer, oh. and then I would just ask the questions that's on the air. Beautiful, right? that's and fucking nobody fucking gold knew. genius. Yeah, now it's common that they yeah. do that, where they send out answers, and DJs are on radio are bullshit, not really talking to them. But at the time, nobody was fucking doing that. We'd also, which is totally illegal, I'd give away tickets to concerts that I didn't have. <laughs> I would just make the phone busy. I'm like, oh, congratulations, Steve, and fucking whatever. And <laughs> no one. And I figured, worst case scenario. If we get caught out, I'll go buy a pair of tickets for exactly. somebody. Exactly. Right, right. Yeah. But ne- we never got caught for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so when you are now like in the finally working as a DJ, you're finally doing your thing. You've quit the strip club DJ stuff. You're a radio man. And now the world is completely changing your industry into yeah. podcasting. Sucks. Did you see that coming? I did see it coming in a very weird way. So the radio show... It's funny, as it started, we did in the small station, you know, and I thought we were killing it. I thought we were fucking, we went from getting one What's call. killing it? You know, just rating wise. Oh, okay. You know, and this is a small stage. We weren't, you know, I was still making my $6 an hour. I talked them into letting me do my own show for two hours. Nice. Right? That's what happened. I only worked that midnight to six shift for like a couple of months. I said, I have this idea for a show. They let me do it Sunday nights, uh, 10 to mid. And um, I thought we were really making a difference. And I don't really trust radio ratings, but the ratings come out. And I said, oh, so what happened? He goes, ah, there wasn't really much of a change, but you can keep going. And it just really bothers like I can't. I was so bummed. Yeah. Like, we were forgetting one call a night to the phones being busy all night. Oh. And I'd run into people that told me they were listening to it. It felt like we were making a difference. And radio stations are generally in clusters. So there was a country station, a news station. The country guy comes in and goes, hey, how'd you do in the ratings? I said, ah, no, nothing. They said nothing changed. Because I don't fucking believe that. And I said, all right, I don't know what to tell you. He, he breaks into the fucking program director's office, prints out the ratings, and we uh, went from last place to first place. Uh, he just didn't want to pay you more. He didn't want to pay us more. He didn't want to. <laughs> and we, there's a thing in radio called TSL, time spent listening. We quadrupled the time spent listening. Oh, dude. So he knew we could start making money and he didn't want to tell us. So then what I did was what he knew we would do is I took these ratings, I went to the biggest radio station in Jersey and said, look what we did there. Let's do that here. And then he hired us. And we went from Sundays 10 to midnight to Saturdays 8 to midnight. So we were And that's giving, when it's drive time. Like people it's are a little out, bigger. It's a little it's bit. A it's a Saturday night. It's a bigger yeah, audience. Because okay. yeah, yeah. now you're looking for people in the car. <laughs> no one's going to. No one's downloading anything at this yeah, point. Yeah, no one's downloading anything. Yeah. Point. And then um, the same thing happens there. We shoot to the top of the ratings. And then I get a syndicated on stations around the country. And we sign this deal with the syndication company by me looking at discarded syndication things that our station wasn't taking. I mocked it on my computer and then shipped it to the same companies until finally we got one that said, we'll take you as a show. And then I learned very early on that there's a big difference between being syndicated Mm -hmm. and being syndicatable. We were available as a show, Uh but who the fuck am I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody took our show, Uh, right? uh, right, right, So we're syndicatable, but the company's losing money, and it's like three or four months in. No one's taking the show. So one day with my old partner, his name is Matt, I said, here's what we're going to do. The show ends at midnight on Saturday. We are going to pack up the fucking car. We are driving to Florida. Along the way, we will just keep listening to the radio. Any station from New York to fucking Florida that was playing Guns N' Roses, Van Halen, AC. We'd write down the call letters, the station they were in, the area that was best of our ability, and I made a list, and we get to Florida. We stay there for a couple of days. We call all these radio stations. We made about 10 meetings. We came back with five stations in a week. We made it back just in time for the next week's show with five new affiliates in South Carolina, in, in North Carolina, that, in Georgia. What you overhead? No, to do nothing. that, just we, gas, dude, gas, gas, and food. Gas. I fucking love this. Yeah, this it's great fucking, angle, right? I yeah. love an angle, it's, right? I, I love, I love just like a hard nose, just like let's just get in a fucking car and do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And now we, now we're on six stations, five new ones, including ours. And I call the syndication company, like, what the fuck do I need you for? Like, yeah. I did this in a week. You had three months, and, and you I don't know the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. So we fired them, which was really stupid. Because I didn't realize that, oh, no, they're also paying for the satellite time yeah. for the radio. I just didn't think. I was just dumb. Yeah. So then we had to switch to delivering on CD and not live anymore, which is not a big deal back then for the shows anyway. But then I didn't know how to get – how do you make fucking copies of CDs? <laughs> what year is this? This is like – Nine, nine. No, 2000. 2000. Because we're leading into when podcasts are starting. Yeah, uh, burning was like just – Just, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah right. So – 
again, with my stupid fucking uh, techie world, I went online, I found schematics to build a multi-burner CD. Oh, right? yeah, because you needed the time. Yeah, because right. at the time, the yeah. multi-burner CDs were $10,000. Yeah, right, right, right. And I'm like, it can't cost $10,000 to do that. So I found the fucking schematics. I got a soldering iron. I bought the, the thing cost me $900. I had to burn the uh, OS into the fucking chips, and I got it working. Damn, right? dude. That's, dude, that's, and then we, that's fucking wild. That's crazy. Shit. And then we, started de- we got up to, we started delivering the show on CD, and then I found a guy that really was passionate about my show, and he started repping us. Then I got on that fucking show, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Wow. And then everybody wanted the dude from Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, and we went up to 100 stations. We had a half a million people listening to us every fucking Saturday. It was crazy. I was making great money. Well, what what's the pay from that? I was making like maybe two hundred grand a year at that point. Because the syndications, they all syndication radio, they all yeah. pay in, all right? Pay in. Oh, okay, wow. right. And uh, then started being. I was a VJ on VH1 and MTV. I was hosting music festivals. I hosted the Sturgis Rally for yeah. five years. And this like holy shit! Like I have fucking made it. Mm-hmm. It's about two thousand four. 2005. You thought you were going to be the next, like, That's you it. know, what was yeah. Man Cow yeah, and one all of those, those guys. Yeah, one of those right, guys. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. But slowly, the world starts changing around, uh, let's see, now I've been doing about probably 2008, 2009. I start noticing money's getting lower. We're still on the same amount of station, but we're making less and less money. And I start thinking, well, I need to fucking figure something Pivot, out. Pivot, right? Yeah, I would make good money, like hosting uh, Shiprocked, which was a, a music festival on a boat. And yeah. I still do it, but I did it for 10 years. I'd make crazy money because they'd pay me a decent amount of money, but I would also host their auctions for the rock charity auction. And the way they pay you is they give you 10% of the take. And I would make like, I'd raise like $100,000. And so I'd get 10 grand, but I would give five grand back. I felt like it's yeah, because it's, it, yeah, yeah. it's, a, it's a charity, right? Yeah, but still, with, and I'd sell out t-shirts for my shows. Mm-hmm. So like in a week, I'd make 10 grand, Just which is on crazy on yeah. the boat, right? And so... One year, they're looking for a comic. And I knew Big J. I met him because he did my show once. And they said, you know any like rock and roll comedians? I said, oh, I know one. And I got them in touch with Big J. And Big J goes on as a comic. And they put us together hosting stuff a lot. I didn't. I knew him, but I wouldn't say we were friends. Sure. We knew each other. And we just make each other fucking laugh the whole week, right? We're getting along. We're spending a lot of time with each other. He says to me, you know, I'm doing this podcast called Legion of Skanks. It's starting to build up, and I'm wondering, would you want to do a podcast with me, right? So at the time, I was definitely the bigger name than him. Yeah. Now it's a very much a 180. But um, <laughs> yeah. I said to him the douchiest thing possible, which is podcasting is for people that can't do radio. Uh, uh, I'm because doing radio. Because radio is an art form, and yeah. you're like, you're yeah, pride exactly. in that, right? You're, yeah, you're yeah, fucking yeah. happy you and Lewis are in a basement Well, recording. you must hate hated in the beginning where yeah. people are just oh, talking over so each much. other, oh. not turning away when they call. Like, hated just all it. the radio yeah. shit that you're like, this yeah. is sacrilege. Hated it, hated it. So, <laughs> Then a year goes by, and I'm listening to all these things about how podcasting is changing the world and blah, blah, blah. And the next year, Jay's back on the boat. I'm back on the boat. And I'm like, you know, I'll do that fucking podcast thing with you. We'll try this out. It was 2013 or 2014. Uh 2014. And we start recording podcasts together. And the way we would do it, I was going to do a morning show at one point, and I decided to call it Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll. And the concept, which I still think is a great idea. I'm too old now. Was I was going to go out and party all night. Right, and the nightclubs and rock clubs, whatever. And whoever's still with me at five in the morning, uh-huh. come do the radio show. Let's talk about what happened. Oh, that's right? fantastic! That's and I figured idea. I could do it for a year or two before, before I die. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but it would be a great uh, thing to do. Then they told me the money. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to fucking do that. But I had the <laughs> I had the logo designed. I had the sdrshow.com. I had it all ready to go. Yeah. So when I told Jay, right, let's do it. He goes, What are we going to call it? And I send him the logo. And he's like, Fuck yeah, let's do it. And yeah. that's how it started in 2014. We recorded like eight or nine episodes, and how we recorded them was that I already had my home set up for radio. I, I that's the first time I ever did your show. Was that at, at my your house? house. It's yeah, great. Yeah, and bands would come in to do my radio show, and I'm like, just hang out for another half hour. We'll do the podcast, right? And we taped like eight or nine of them. And I'll never forget it was it was Corey Glover, the the lead singer of Living Color. Mm-hmm. He was like the third or fourth episode. Nice guy too. I, I did a show with him with you. Once. Yeah, such he's a good great. Dude. He calls me like two months later, and he goes. What happened to that podcast that I did? I'm like, because they were all just sitting on my hard drive. 
at the time you had to create an RSS feed. Yeah. You gotta, you know, oh, it was right. before you could just yeah, punch it right. in. And, they yeah. were yeah. and I said, I probably should fucking figure this out. Yeah, right. So I built our website. I created our RSS feed and I released everything in 2014 as our first podcast. We, yeah. I released eight episodes at once and that's how the whole thing started. And now, so now so fucking that cool. is your business. Is not only are you a radio host, but now you're overseeing how many shows do you have on network now? Twenty one. Twenty one oh, shows. Yeah. And you're overseeing how all of those are done. And I know uh Luis J. Gomez is your partner, so yes. you both the, do that. The G and the S in gas. Yes. Gomez and Sutton. Yes. Yeah. So, because SAG didn't sound right. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> Point we're getting to. How we got to the name? By the way, I said that we were like driving each other crazy with stupid names, and I said, "Here's my idea, Lars." In, in honor of Metallica, I said, "Lewis and Ralph Studio, Lars." Right? And he goes, "What about Gas?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, go with uh, Gas yeah. Digital. That sounds cool." And I immediately had the idea for the logo with the um, yeah. Gas plugging in, and that's how the name came about. Yeah, that's great. What are you seeing now? Like, what's the trends you're seeing now? What are we, we going to bail on here? What are well, we first keep? of all, I do think this is what's going to happen. And I hate to say this, but that's why we've been pivoting more towards more exclusive content and more events and more one-off stuff. Because the, now that You just did the half hours, right? The, we did the guest 30s. We mm -hmm. did six of those. Those are really successful. Um, and we well, are What's now successful for one of those? Like, what's the angle? Because I've... Just so the audience knows, a lot of people are doing a lot of independently produced specials. A lot of them that are successful are because they have a, quite a bit of subscribers on their YouTube right. page. And I know you guys do as well. And you So were we did to... this differently, though. Sorry okay. to cut you off. No, no, no. Go ahead. This was 100% a financially losing scenario, no matter what. Why? We gave the shows to the comics. In exchange for them not charging us, we said, we'll give you the beautiful special we did it exclusively as a branding play mm -hmm. for Gas Digital ah, to totally. start being looked at as more than just a podcast. Yeah, because now you want to be a production company. We want to be a production company. So now, you know, you and I talked off air. Yeah. We're working on the next big event. Yeah. We produce Skank Fest, you yeah, know, which yeah. is a, a festival. We want to be looked at as not just a place to go listen to podcasts. Podcasting is something that we do, and we're, it's the bread and butter for what we do. But we also sell ads for... 20 podcasts that aren't on the network. Yeah, your you know? system down there, uh, you walked mm -hmm. me through recently with some of the upgrades you guys did, and your your sales room is fire, dude. Yeah, it's crazy. Those guys are fucking on it. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. So, Gas Digital has turned into the network, the the ad side, which it's called the ad side, because that's yeah. everyone referred yeah, yeah, to yeah, the yeah. ad side .com. The, the merch side, and now events and stuff like that, you know? Um, and that's where I see, because I believe... Now that podcasting is a viable business, mm -hmm. where you see shows like Smartless, it's they're making yeah. crazy oh my money. God, you know? yeah. Yeah. So what's going to happen? The government's going to get involved, right? Yeah. AI is going to get involved, and it's going to say, "Oh, they said the uh, words you can't say anymore on their podcast." We're getting them off yeah, our the system. The same thing, FCC in the early aughts that, that uh, ruined exactly. terrestrial radio, yeah, that right. forced turned into serious. Yeah, that's it's what's gonna going happen to happen. To podcast. It is going to happen, and they'll cull through. Every episode you did in an hour, because it's fucking AI. Yeah, yeah. And make a list of all, oh, you're now blacklisted, right? So that's why we're now moving. Now pay more. us to get back in. Yeah, or exactly. Or, you know. Yeah, if, make, make like a tier system. Oh, all yeah, that yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we are, which is only the newest 20 episodes are free on for Gas Digital, everything's on our exclusive servers. So that is part of our business model mm -hmm. is that we, uh, like with everyone making money on Patreon, I'm very happy for you, right? It's great. It's just like OnlyFans. It's one percent that makes money. Ninety-nine percent don't make money, right? Probably less than one percent. Like SDR is in the top 05 percent of podcasts, but we have less than far less than a million listeners. So Joe Rogan gets like what fifty million. Yeah. So to be in the top 05 percent, I could have a couple hundred thousand listeners, and still that variance of the point five is millions upon millions of listeners. It's, yeah, it's insane. So most people don't make money. But what I'm saying with Patreon. All you need is them to say, oh, that guy's offensive. I don't like what he said, and shut him down. They did it a few years ago. Really? YouTube's doing it every fucking day. We got our SDR channel shut down on YouTube because oh, somebody was offended. So you have to take ownership of your own sure. content or you're going to get fucked. Yeah, you cannot have the platform be beholden to the platform right. is what you're saying. Yes. I. Uh, what do you see for OnlyFans? You have tons of uh, porn stars on. I've had tons of porn stars on my old show, <laughs> and I feel like that... I thought that bubble was going to pop when they decided they were going to get rid of all sex workers on it. Yeah. But they didn't because they they, there was too much money to be One made. One guy was like, wait a minute, what? Hold on. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're juicing us and we're going to yeah. get rid of them. What do you see similar things happening with that? Well, first of all, I think it's so content? stupid that they're trying to create 
a mainstream brand and not change the name. You know, like Whitney Cummings did her roast on OnlyFans and sort of oh, broke project. Oh, yeah. But right. it's still called OnlyFans. Yeah. You right. know, if you call it True Fans. Sure. Or something else. But it's a brand that is synonymous with porn. With thought. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So it just it makes no sense to me, but whatever. Um, I think with regards to OnlyFans, the sad truth is men are creeps. Yes. Men will always be creeps. Yes. And women will always make money selling sex to men. Forever. I don't think it's going away as long yeah. as they keep... Why would they change now? God only knows what their fucking income their percentages is. off yeah. everyone. I mean, oh. they take a chunk. Man. It's crazy. So I think when your business is, they own their servers. What might be hard for them? Because I did see this at the AVNs because uh, SDR was was nominated for an AVN and lost. But um, <laughs> there are all these companies spr sprouting up now that are allowing you to pay, not through Visa, not through Mastercard, through like some sort of crypto thing. Sure. Because that's going to happen. Like yeah. if they decide Amex and oh, we yeah, don't want you to to, to rep uh, only because they're already thing, doing right? that that's like FetLife. Like I I really love FetLife. That was you the know. only fans. Uh, like Visa was behind there, yeah, that, Visa, I think but, that. Yeah, Visa. Right? So yeah. That happens again. Then if if you have to go through a crypto, uh, you know, step to pay, <laughs> yeah. that's going to really hurt that. Business. Yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. definitely going to. So all right, before I get you out of here, uh, you put on a bunch of weight years ago. Decided. I'm done with it. And you started running. I see all that. Now you've traveled all these extravagant places to run and you're really invested in, I would say, foods for lack of a better term. And Good Sugar is your other podcast that does really well. Why that? What happened to you? Or do you have like some kind of well, sickle cell this. anemia, like an African-American <laughs> man? <or? laughs> um, I, I, it'd be weird that I'm quoting Dua Lipa right now, right? But this is a quote from Dua Lipa that I think is true, which is, uh, remember she did like that goofy dance and everyone made fun of her. She couldn't dance. So she went and she got real dance lessons and now she's a good dancer, right? And she said in an interview, sometimes bullying works. Yeah. And uh, so yeah. I was at my maximum density. This is, you know, first I gained some weight because my father was sick. Mm -hmm. Then he died and I gained more weight because I was depressed. Then COVID hit. And I actually don't know what my maximum weight was. I stopped looking at 325. You know what it is. I don't. I stopped going on the scale. But you're, you feel it your body. It was over 325. Okay. So 325 was the most I ever saw. I never went on the scale again because I didn't want to know. Yeah. So yeah. I could have been. Can you still see your dick though? No. <laughs> wow. Oh wow. Damn, that must have been yeah. awful. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that's when you stop getting on the scale. Yeah, yeah. 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 You can't see your dick because that's the worst. Because like that's the new metric, metric right? right? You're like, you, it's all numbers, and then right. it's like I can't. I see remember my the dick. first time yeah. I saw him. Like, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> it's been a minute. Hey, so I would get so. There's a video of me trying to do a pull up. Because I was delusional and thought, oh, I could still do this shit. It was with, uh, what's his name from Kill Tony was on too. Um, red, red. No, the, the main guy in Kill Tony was my brain. Tony Hinchcliffe. Tony Hinchcliffe. Tony? Jesus, Tony. <laughs> Tony. Tony from Kill Sorry. Tony. Yeah. He was on the episode too and Jay challenged. I thought, I could do a fuck. And That's I, what I love about SDR though. Whenever I'm there, we're always doing a, like a fun bit. They always got fun bits always like that. Always dumb shit, yeah. So, couldn't do it. And not only could I do it, the side angle is my big fat belly hanging over my fucking Ant. Oh. And then the amount of fucking you fat fuck. Yeah. Oh, yeah, your listeners are Shrek brutal. Is a good one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brutal. So, like, all right, I need to make a change. And that was even before. That was, like, right at the beginning of the lockdowns and stuff. Then it got even worse. And then, you know, we all started, like, making breads and fucking eating shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then it was it was May of 2020. Um, I was like, all right, I'm going to start running. And I'm going to run every other day, no matter what. And I'm talking about, like, I ran once it was so cold out that I went to drink water and I was like, what's going on? Like, oh, it froze solid, you know? So I went where I couldn't run a block without needing to take a break. And I would do this thing called couch to a 5K, finish that to get to 5K or three miles, 5K to 10K, 10K to 15K. And now I ran my first half marathon wow. in April of 2022. Wow. Mm -hmm. it took two years. And I said, well, you know what? And I went, I did it in Miami because I thought it'd be fun to do it in Miami. And then I just made up this stupid idea. I'm going to run six half marathons in six different countries this next year or so. I ended up running nine, right? I did Florida, Brooklyn, and uh, Rockaway, mm -hmm. right? But then I did Iceland, Ireland, Barcelona, and I'm forgetting one other. I just did, oh, Hawaii. Hawaii, yeah. Hawaii. So I just ran all over the world, and now I run 30 miles a week roughly. Shit. I changed my, there was a day that I fucking, I ate an entire pizza. Yeah. <laughs> I ate an you entire know, McGowan? Yeah, yeah. No, was I'm it like, I'm right pizza? here with you. Yeah, dude. An entire pint of ice cream, uh -huh. right? And then 10 minutes later, my friend invited me to go have dinner. I'm like, yeah, sure, let's go have dinner. Yeah. 
And I was like, all right, this is, I'm going to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're, now you're running and you're doing the right things yeah. physically. Yeah. So then I, I, you know, then I put out that book. I don't know if you ever showed you Yeah, yeah, that. I saw it on the, the website. Yeah, it hit top 100 in uh, Amazon. Holy in shit. Its, in its category, which was like health and wellness, and, which is, it's a 200 page book and it says the 100% guaranteed guide to weight loss and fitness. But chapter one says eat less. Chapter two says work out more, and the rest of the book is blank because everybody's like, "Well, would you do keto? Would you do?" Yeah. It's like just eat less and work out more. It's yeah. gonna make a fucking difference. Yeah. It's yeah. just that nobody wants the answer. Right. That's no, that's going it to, be to take a long time, so they can fail at it. And or say they it's want so some, hard. Or they want Ozempic, or they want something easy where it doesn't right. like like with Ozempic. I'm happy you're losing weight, whoever's on Ozempic. But I got to tell you, you're not healthy. Yeah, you're just thinner. But you're not. If you can't run, mm-hmm. if you can't run up a flight of stairs, your heart health your heart is not, health is yeah. horrible. Yeah. So it's that one-two punch of eating less and working out more. Ozempic handles the eating less because you get nauseous. Yeah, but you're still fucking unhealthy. Like, yeah, and that's the big difference. That's mm-hmm. what me doing both, and it it's been now. Uh, it'll be three years in in. Uh, Congratulations! Yeah, of it. Awesome. So, that's awesome. And I'm cool. I'm went to, so let's say three thirty just to make it easy. I'm under two fifty now. So I was like 70, 80 pounds. Yeah, you're a big dude. You're like 6'6". Six, yeah, six. I should be like 240. I'm 6'6". Six, six. 240 is my, is my weight. Anything under that, I look weird. Okay. So I'm like 10 pounds away from But the Good Sugar be. thing is about... So Good Sugar was started with the guy from Juice Press. Okay. He sold the company. That's made your a co-host, portrait. right? My co-host. And then I'm partners with... We have a store on 3rd Avenue and 69th Street that is all raw, all vegan, but also there is a socially conscious footprint. No single-use plastics. Yeah, I you saw get, that on the site. If you bring back glass com, bottles, yeah. you get a dollar off. And trying to just do a little good in the world. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, that's great. And the food's good, and just a big giant yellow sign so, on 3rd and 6th. And, I, and we do the podcast every week. I'm the guinea pig. I bring, I'll try cryotherapy. I tried IV. I tried fucking, uh, where's the thing when you shit for 45 minutes? The, uh, Fun. The fucking um, colonic. <laughs> Chinese food, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, expired tuna fish, yeah, 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 yeah. a colonic, which is really I'm weird. On the road with yeah. you, you shit yeah. for forty-five minutes yeah. on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, it's really weird to be leaned over and a girl's talking to you while you're shitting. So we're, <laughs> so but I try all of it and talk about what works and what doesn't, or at least anecdotally for me. Yeah. And I've added a shit ton of stuff to my morning routine now of all things to try and be better, try and be healthier. I meditate every day. I do yoga every day. I run or work out every day, mm-hmm. and there is no days off. You know, you just have to do something. Yeah. Even if it's just get out and walk just for ten active. minutes, yeah. do something every day, mm-hmm. and it's made a fucking huge difference in my life. I feel twenty years younger than I did three years ago. It's amazing. It's yeah, wild. It's fucking Plug cool, where you're at. Uh, everywhere at I am Ralph Sutton. The SDR show uh, is easy enough to find. Mm-hmm. The SDR show, Good Sugar Podcast, and Good Sugar is on Third Avenue and Sixty Street. Amazing. Uh, Joshcar.com at Josh Accardo. Go ahead, Ed. Uh, edmcgowan.com Ed McGowan Comedy on Instagram email us any kind of work stuff at uh, workingclasscomedians at gmail.com we'll see you guys again next week you can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday you can follow us on Instagram at workingclassholes also make sure you watch the full show on YouTube all you gotta do is type in workingclassholes and please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend come on